all right everyone so today i have another designer who is in my group coaching program party like a ceo she jennifer is killing it she is changing the game of her business and i cannot wait for you guys to hear her story because <laughs> jennifer and i had a very different different journey together um, i know some of you guys have watched like amber story and joy story and linda and all these other ones so i always like bringing my designers here because they get to share their perspective right and there's always something i learn about them so jennifer welcome welcome Hi. welcome so feel free to introduce yourself let me know like who you are um, what you do and then we'll go from there so hi my name is jennifer i am coming all the way from toronto canada yay a canadian <laughs> <laughs> um so a little bit about me i actually started my balloon journey um my balloon company back in April of 2021. So not quite a year and a half just yet. I knew that I always wanted to, aside from learn the craft and get better at, you know, my designs and the balloon work itself, I definitely wanted to invest in other training and learning, particularly the business end of um, being an entrepreneur. So pretty much how I, I found you. And actually it's funny that I'm doing a YouTube for you because I found you on YouTube. Right. And Isn't I was like, I, wanna, I, wanna <laughs> I be, remember. You know? Oh man. If I can, I'm it was Amber's it. video. Yeah. Yeah. You were like, um, I just want to say that I'm grateful. Our first live call you like, I can't believe like the people I found, I watched on YouTube. I'm like sitting in front of them. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. That I was, was like, so oh, cute. I'm famous. I was, it was so funny. <laughs> but kind of walk me through before you even joined the group coaching program, what did your business like look like? What was going on for you before our worlds collided? Yeah. So as I was saying, you know, I wanted to invest in um, learning and stuff like that. So I had spent already before I had met you a, a fair bit of money in terms of just starting up the business licensing and supplies and all that stuff and then a couple of courses as well particularly because I wanted to excel my business to be able to do the type of Instagram work that I've been seeing which are like the larger setups and all that stuff and at the time when I had met you I was really stuck in this bubble of just selling small ticket designs being like gift items, like rose boxes and little bubble balloons and pickup orders mm, uh, for yeah. better lack of words. I remember that too. Was, no setups they whatsoever. Cute though. Like, they were cute. They're cute. Definitely. But at the end of the day, it was like, they're, they're beautiful. And it was an internal struggle of whether or not people would pay for that design. And I believe at the time I was, I had first started out my first launch charging like $50 for one of those like flower boxes uh, with the clear bubble and, and all that stuff in the printing happy birthday or whatever it was I think it was a Valentine's Day or something there's a struggle between trying to make a bunch of sales and and also to get my friends and family on board to support me and and buy the $50 ticket item and even then there was a bit of pushback and it I just you know, long story short, was just not making the money that I wanted to. I wanted to do more of the larger setups, the balloon garlands, the Instagram posts right. that you all, the Instagram in photos, posts. Pinterest, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I work a day job as well. I'm a mail carrier and delivery agent. I got injured. And because of that injury, I was on short-term disability for a couple months. And I was frustrated because at the time, not only was I not making money, but I had just gotten the jobs and it was just a really big struggle for me financially. So when I was forced to take short-term disability and not offer modified work, now I'm making even less on a bi-weekly basis for the two months. So I had a lot of challenges. Um, and I remember our first call together, even before you joined the program, you were telling me, like you said, you got injured and I was just like, wow, like, and then, oh yes, that's yeah. right. We, when we got, I got started the balloon business in April, 2021, and I didn't connect with you until December, December January. Right. And that's when I totaled my car. Right. I had an accident. Oh, so that was a different, it, it was, 
That was it was winter. One? Yeah, it was winter. And I had flipped my car three times on the highway because of uh, black ice. And so, I mean, financially speaking and my life speaking, I was like a mess. But yeah, it was definitely a tough decision to initially jump into the program and, and take that investment to, you know, excel my business. And, you know, I love your, you, I've always loved your honesty. I think even from the jump, you've always been the person who was like, I'm going to make it work. I just don't know how it's going to work. Uh, but we even jumped on a second call because sometimes I do that. And I love that you brought that up because that's what happens with a lot of designers. They are hesitant based on price point, but it's not the price that's really stopping people most of the time. Sometimes it really is. It's really believing that you can actually commit and execute to get that money back into your hands, right? Which we will talk because you definitely have surpassed the little fee that I do charge <laughs> compared to what you've invested, right? But I would love, you know, we talked about the challenges, like even before hiring, like that car accident. And then I even, like, I got goosebumps again because I remember that call like it was yesterday. And I was like, wow, like you didn't come out with no broken bones. You didn't come out with not, barely a scratch, right? And I said, you know, you have to understand that you were blessed and almost not even almost you were destined for more someone who makes a comes out of a traumatic experience I always say there's a huger blessing coming out of that right so I said it from the beginning but like let's talk about that because I think like I said I loved your honesty from the beginning what were some of the fears you had when you first started and maybe like when you decided to jump all in right what were some fears that kind of were you making you feel hesitant well I mean the biggest thing which I already mentioned was the financial aspect you know for me I'd like to say I'm pretty thrifty <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the same time it's like I'm starting a new business I spent all this money on the supplies and stuff and you know a big giant helium tank is not exactly the cheapest thing to to add to your inventory but you know and and after already spending several hundred dollars on two separate courses actually each financially was probably the the hardest part to overcome but I think one of the biggest things that kind of tipped the scale on that was just the call that we had as you mentioned it really isn't the financial aspect I think it's the biggest thing once you've created relationships with people and the trust that comes along with it from your program the mindset being the foundation of it all was really key and breaking that down was really what made me put that all that value into what I'm spending you are the epitome of transparency for me because even with if when you guys come on if you guys ever were to join my coaching services the transformation that I absolutely love and I always tell sometimes my designers like hey go back or look at the first call compared to where you are now because we have recency bias and we forget how far we've come the fears of always going back to understanding and working on your mindset is so important people think it's a strategy problem when it comes to their business and it's never a strategy. I teach the strategies that were going to get you there, but it's it's not the strategies. It's the mindset of overcoming that, stepping into that person, right? Because that ego holds on so tight, particularly like they don't, it doesn't, like you've been through so much prior to our coaching calls. Why would this be the different? Why would this make sense now? But the one thing I will say, even with this call now, right? A lot of people hesitate about sharing their story because, and I wanted to emphasize this with Jennifer, with your story, most people hesitate to celebrate, right? One, we're always worried about the future because <laughs> the future is never promised, right? We don't know when our next sale or our next client is going to be. That's always the case. But two, what one thing I loved about you was just that there's still challenges going on. And I think we, I want to dive into that, you know, in a few minutes, because I think that's the rawness of who you are always been. You've, you've challenged me as a coach and you would suggest something. And I'm like, boom, there it is. It's improved. It's there. Jennifer inspired me. <laughs> so yeah. And honestly, it's not even me. It's you. I think it's <laughs> like you, it's funny that you say I inspire you because like, I'm definitely a very straightforward person. I'll speak mm. my mind and, you know, like 
there were some calls where I was like, I felt like, oh my God, I'm being attacked, but not really attacked, but like just put on the spot. Like, Mm -hmm. what are you doing? You know? And it's like, (laughs) and you know, the transparency going back to that, it's like, I am only as safe in this environment to share my transparency and my Mm -hmm. story because you do it. And the fact that you've posted those videos about your struggles and that you've been through really tough times to a point where you're, you know, breaking down in front of the camera. Like I don't personally record myself. I don't think I could ever, but I mean, just being in the group and having that safe space to be able to like, you know, even if it's vent about like something that happened or a client or, you know, a situation that, you know, I didn't know how to handle. It's like everybody is shared their own personal experience and that's a a huge value in itself the community is such a safe space and safe environment to be vulnerable and that's what i really treasure when and if ever somebody comes in so to share my story in hopes that you understand like the feeling of being alone as an entrepreneur is already a given right i don't ever want people to come into the program and feel like they're on their own with it and that's that no this is a process and i'm here to support you as much as i can Let's talk about what we are here to celebrate because there has been a game change. Like you said, you went from $50 selling these little bouquets that were gorgeous. Um, it just wasn't ideal for, you know, where I saw Jennifer's potential. Um, let's talk about some wins. Like how, let, throw some out there. What were some things you accomplished either while in the program, maybe even a little after? I remember when I actually, my little spreadsheet where money goes in, money goes out. And um, I remember specifically the month that I came out of the hole, so to speak, from all the money that I spent. And um, it was a great feeling. It was $50 out of the hole, but it was like the first $50 I felt that I actually made. I mean, everybody's business is different. Everybody's face is different. I chose to invest more and put money in more in the beginning and chose to climb out of it a little bit later on. But Um, And I don't regret that because I do firmly believe that with everything that I've learned and took away from the program and still do to this day, that it's only basically fast tracked my ability to make, to sell higher ticket um, items or or jobs rather. My profit last month, um, and this is profit, this is what, after all the expenses and everything and um, was... uh, $3,241. $3,241. And that's with just two clients. Oh my, that's profit. And, yeah. And that, it's funny because I had another month, um, and this is through my journey. I had another month where um, I had eight clients. And I actually like lost money, but I think I, in that month, in that month, I did have an, another major expense. I think it was my helium tank or something that had to refill. But in the end, that month only made me, you know, a thousand dollars off those eight clients versus last month I had two clients and maybe like a couple pickup orders, but yeah, it was a massive like realization that, wow, like, And I think we had that conversation in that call um, that week Mm -hmm. where we were celebrating our wins. And I was like, oh, I had eight clients. And in this past recent weekend, I had, you know, three or four jobs and it was super stressful. And and I was just kind of a little bit frantic, but like I was making money. So I was happy about that. And then you just kind of like opened my eyes in terms of like, okay, well, you need to increase your prices because you could do less and still make more. Mm. So I was like, hmm. (laughs) And then that's when I started, you know, changing a little bit. I started, you know, getting that affirmation that I needed that, you know, my work is good. I can increase my prices. And it just, you know, that was definitely one of the big lessons that I learned. Probably like overall sales for that month were probably higher. It's probably like some. Oh, yeah four or five thousand dollar month just right I'm, then... I'm reaching for the five no I'm you're almost there, there. Yeah. Wow, three thousand yeah. dollars in profit is okay so the reason why we want to celebrate that right because three thousand dollars might not sound like a big deal but it the fact that it's profit um usually my designers share revenue which is the sales right it's what you actually charge your profit is three thousand for the month which means after everything you paid for you made three thousand dollars cash to keep in your pocket and do whatever you want right you can pay yourself 
reinvest in the business Put back into the business <laughs> right that's what most people do <laughs> but the fact that you're able to do that and like you said you're aiming for that 5k now which you're on your way like it's only a matter of time that is huge i love how we always celebrate um small wins and i think that's like a big key thing is to always um whenever you're going especially when you're going through rough times is to just kind of bring it back and scale it back and realize how far you've come and just celebrate the small wins even something as small as um for me figuring out what type of clients I wanted to work with. Um, and I'm still working on that now. I definitely want to speak to you about market research in order to kind of really narrow down my niche and my dream client. But when I experienced it, I knew that, okay, this is what a taste of what a dream client would be like. Mm. I love those type of people because, you know, I've worked with other types of clients where, you know, everything has to be exactly, you know, what they want and everything, which is fine. And when they allow you to do whatever you want and they just say, okay, well, this is the theme. I trust you gratification you get mm -hmm. and knowing that like, it wasn't like watched over and like, you know, right. it's just, it's, they trust it's, you. It's, it's, yeah. It's a really great feeling. Right. And isn't it easier, right. Versus pulling teeth with $50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my gosh and even those $50 it was like oh I have to have this color and this flower and <laughs> right it it's was like those oh my cheap gosh clients <laughs> that always got some this in like it's $50 <laughs> yeah <laughs> and now oh you've got gosh. people spending hundreds if not a couple of thousand dollars um and there's just letting you have a complete creative control which is exactly where your zone of genius is whenever you start tapping into it and then all of a sudden you're getting these small little wins those small wins create bigger imagination it makes room for you to show up as your future self and you're making decisions now that are completely funneling through instead of it getting trapped in all that mess that was prior to you know you accepting and receiving uh there's actually a law called uh oh, i'm not even gonna say embarrass myself but anyways you have to actually be ready to receive success and if you're not, it won't come. So when you're at the point of those small wins, that's what I want. I want to celebrate those because when you're in gratitude and you're creating and you're loving what you're doing, oh, look at that. Po oh, if I post here, I get three to five inquiries. And I remember you were like, how do I slow down? <laughs> the yeah. I was like, what? That's like, when that's automation, <laughs> yeah, that's when automation and processes had to come into place. All right. So everybody always asks me like, how do I get clients? How do I, what is the secret sauce to gaining clients in your business? I would say the two things that really, really made the biggest difference for me was number one, that foundation being the mindset mm -hmm. and number two, perseverance. Mm. Um, mindset was such a huge breakthrough for me because I think I spent the most time in that first part of your program because I just couldn't wrap my head around um, charging my worth, believing whether or not I was actually good. I think in general, like whatever, you could charge whatever you want. <laughs> um, it's really just, it's just your mindset, right? Yeah. And it, when I grew up, it was always just kind of, I wasn't very confident in myself and I always was kind of like a people pleaser so mm -hmm. to speak so I, I always had to you know worry about whether or not people liked me or were my friends or you know I took I took it particularly hard in the beginning when I couldn't even get friends and family to spend $50 on my little rose box or whatever but I think that was one of the hard challenges that I I, I faced and realized was that you know strangers will definitely be your bigger supporters and friends and family and that's okay mm -hmm. um and second of all, perseverance. Um, I went through, even to this day, like up. It, it's always like an ebb and flow, right? When you don't have, you know, things coming in and stuff, and it's really easy to just kind of get hung up on, oh, I'm not making any business right now. I'm not, you know, I don't have anything booked until, you know, a month from now. Anything can happen from now until then. It's just you got to go out and create those opportunities yourself. Because I pushed through and I had mentally decided, okay, this is something that like I want to, you know, go down and I want to pursue. Um, it, it's just that men mindset and and continuing to push through even in the toughest times. 
Yeah, I think I think it's easier said than done too, right? Like it like, is, it is. It's a really choice, are, right? Because you yeah. have to make a choice of who you are in those moments when everything against you in your world is completely shattering everything you believe to be true, right? Like how strong are that's true strength. Um, perseverance is when you completely don't believe anything that's going on and untrusting mm -hmm. the vision and dream that you have. Um, we were going between giving website audits and we were going through it and I'm like, hey, I think you need to showcase just your garlands. So you took a course, right? And I was just like, um, you took a class and it was a hands-on. I was like, why not put that to, let's, you already invested in that. Like, let's start showing. Um, and I know you has to be like, well, why would I take off something like small per se when it comes, you know, that's not selling and then push something that's not selling. And I said, because that's what you want. Right. And at the yeah. end of the day, I have to stop every advice. And that's one thing about me as a coach, guys, like I will literally stop the live session and be like, what do you want then? Right. Because it's not about me. I'm not the driver. And I always tell everybody who comes to my program and I will say it over. And if anybody joins, you will hear me say it over and over again. Right. I am not the driver. Right. What feels good to you? What feels right? And although it may feel uncomfortable, that's where my job is. And I always told Jennifer, you don't pay me to keep you small. You pay yeah. me to keep you on track where you want to go and where you want to go is what you decide. And then the next week you changed it all up, <laughs> and you put your garments up there. And I was oh like, oh my God, it was, it was, was the like, scariest oh my God, thing. Okay. My feed, my Instagram feed and my website and stuff it showcased all these little items. And I think it was such a hard thing for me to take it off mm -hmm. because I was worried about not having photos. I was worried about, you know, if I can make that 50 bucks, cause I'm already not making anything now, like why would I give it up? But um, I think the program in itself and your advice and the fact that, you know, you pushed me to an uncomfortable position that you knew firsthand would take me where I wanted to go. And the fact that it was in a level where it was like, okay, you're the driver, you decide. Mm -hmm. I can only suggest, but if you choose not to, that that's really your choice. And I really respected that. It, it made me challenge myself in a way that no one has ever really like, you know, told me things that I didn't want to hear. <laughs> yeah. And it's just because it's like, I know you were putting in so much work and you were finally getting traction. I wanted to push you out the mud, right? Clean those shoes off and become this beautiful blood. Like you're like the trenches, like, you know what I mean? Like that's why they say the lotus flower goes through the trenches. Like you were ready to bloom. And I wanted you to bloom and break through, like break through the dirt, the mud, everything that told you no and told you that you can't do it because I was not that I was tired but I wanted the narrative to be switched because the potential was already there now you were making actions towards it it was just that little what do you want now right this is your decision it's I'm only going to support you so whatever you decide this is what I'll hold you accountable to and I think that really changed um because when you came back and you took you literally did everything we discussed I was like all right buckle up Let's enjoy this. Let's and it's, get you and it's funny because there was actually one other time where I didn't take your advice <laughs> and it played out just exactly as you said it would, mm. which was like, you know, doing work for free. Yeah. And I had like a, like, you know, this um, oh my gosh, market yes. thing. Yes, that thing. market yeah. thing. And that was like, a tough lesson. All right, so that's our next yeah. question, right? Like that was a huge tough <laughs> lesson you had to learn. Go ahead. Talk and about I was it. adamant. I was adamant about doing it because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get exposure. I'm gonna get clients. And it, anyways, long story short, it became this whole fiasco where they wanted all this, you know, extra stuff for free, and then they ended up, um, you know, telling me that I couldn't you know, um, I guess like make sales on the spot or book on the spot or something like that. I'm like, okay, well, you know, if I'm doing all this for you, then what's in it for me, if I can't even get business and all you want me to do is I'm a, all I'm allowed to do was to just hand out cards. Um, because I was ready to just, you know, sell small designs on the spot or even take bookings right on the spot. But I mean, you know, I was all, I was warned by you. I was warned by the other designer in the in a coaching group that you know they've been down that road and it doesn't exactly play out the way you want it to but because at the time I didn't really have any jobs or anything like that and um I was willing I guess to work for free mm -hmm. but yeah it's true that and was it's a okay. lesson learned you know, 
and I will put her out there. Amber's was one, and she even put yeah. it on the YouTube so you can <laughs> say her name. Um, but she was definitely one where I've been there, right? It was almost like a simulation of, okay, I already know how this is gonna work out. I'm gonna warn you, but you but, let me. <laughs> but I'm gonna let you get that experience if this is what you feels best, because I already know, and and, and I always want to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time i so far i've been right about it so if anybody joins that who proves me wrong kudos to you but i think um it's an experience that will always be in the back of your mind to never do something like that again right and, and it doesn't work for you now more than ever so that was a tough lesson i forgot about that too like that was a good yeah. one and you've <laughs> named some other ones too because oh but if, if you notice like if anybody's listening to this throughout the whole thing your mindset completely changed like who you were even like I always tell Linda too like how you dress and how you show up also changes right because the inner you is now glowing out so in is coming out so then it's just like you know if you ever want to watch Jennifer's content she is oh my god painting like <laughs> I can see you doing YouTube channel in the future because I love oh. watching your stories I love watching your reels um oh, obviously I'll list you. all your information down below but let's talk about like okay so we kind of emphasize a little bit but anything that you haven't mentioned how has like having a mentor um because you've had a few you even had a few programs but what made it different this time um, versus the last time? I think, you know, speaking as a Canadian and being the only one that is not in the States, I find that, you know, some of the other courses that I have take, including an in-person class, which was mostly like hands-on learning how to build a garland and all the tips and mm -hmm. tricks and everything. That, that was great. And it was great for networking and, and, you know, meeting other local people. But I find that the safe environment of what we have our community in our party like a ceo group allows me to you know feel a little bit more comfortable asking like any like there's no hold bar on any of the questions i may have including um people's input on like what they would do if they had a client ask them x y or z or you know what they would charge for design x y or z and if i'm charging this much is it you know, what, you know, is that like enough or what, what your opinions are? I really, really like that safe environment that we have and even have created relationship with some of the designers in the group enough to Zoom call them one-on-one -on -one and, you know, work together outside of our time, me and you. Biggest change for me, aside from obviously like being able to charge bigger ticket items is just having that ongoing check-in because like I said, ebb and flow, I have great weeks and I have terrible weeks. And I would like to say I'm in the dead end of a terrible couple of weeks, mm -hmm. even though like I've had a lot of jobs, but I'm just going through a lot of personal things right now. And, you know, even just having this call with you today really brings back that grateful attitude and, and celebrating, you know, where I am now. Um, because I really need that constant check-in and I like that the calls are bi-weekly um, because, you know, anything can happen in the span of two weeks. And as long as I have something to look forward to, to be in a community with people that can understand and relate to what I'm going through, um, but also at the same time, learn and grow. I think that that's my favorite thing about the program is it's not just even a call, it's like a Zoom call. I know I should probably go on camera more, but <laughs> I'm usually, right, I'm usually like in my PJs and like scarfing down food or something. So I think everybody's just like, I just want to be in the energy, but I'm like, listen, I'm looking at computer screens. I'm like, <laughs> but yes. Um, and I think too, like when you emphasize too, and that's what I always wanted to give, it's an exclusive field, but it's intimate. And I always tell you, regardless of how big it is, I still want people to feel that way. And, you know, I'll do whatever it takes for people to continue to feel supported because one of my mentors, she kind of does the same thing with us, right? She has a big group, but you really do feel supported. And that's what really counts towards success is to know that you have something to look forward to. You always have a group. I always have to remind everybody like you can vent here, right? This is a safe space. <laughs> I make sure like nobody comes in here. And if they do, they will be booted out very quickly um, because a cancer cell is very real and it'll spread fast, right? Um, but I love that we bring this community together and that you build relationships with other people as well. 
uh, which is so important. Even as a former teacher in the classroom, I used to know peer-to-peer -peer learning is the most powerful learning there is outside of your own experience. So whenever you guys get together, like they'll send, they'll put it on their stories and they'll meet up. Actually, before we get to the advice, I wanted to talk about, you know, you said a lot of, and I said, it's okay. You can share whatever you want, Jennifer, but I don't like to sell, uh, a, it's a great to celebrate, right? It's great, but I like to sell transparency and I like to sell honesty. And I think because my designers who are going through the program who are still there, they forget like, oh, I had such high wins, but now I'm in such a low point. Like, I don't want to go on these celebration calls, but I told them, but that's the point, right? Because that's the selling point. It's that it's not always high. It's low no. too. So how's business going for you? And, um, you know, and what are, are, are there still challenges that you're still having to overcome, even though you have such great wins? Oh my God. You know what? I think the hardest thing kind of is just allowing me to realize that I am booking less clients now. That's the reality of it. But those, those one or two clients versus the eight <laughs> um, make me just as much, if not more. So it's easy to get swept up in like, okay, well, I'm only doing one or two consult calls or booking one or two consults or, you know, a client a month versus whereas before I had a higher volume, um, it's easy to, you know, just kind of look at the volume and, and be upset about that. But like I said, just bringing it back to celebrating small wins, you know, continuing to persevere through. I think I have more terrible weeks than I have good, mm. to be honest now. But I think it's my capacity to be able to handle those difficult times that gives gives me the success or the feeling of success that I need. And honestly, like I've, I've taken a few breaks from social media altogether in order to kind of bring myself back if I get to that level where I'm just completely overwhelmed, like I'm super stressed out about marketing, especially posting all the time and everything. I took a vacation as well, which was something that like I rarely do, went to a nice tropical place and, mm. you know, came back super relaxed and everything. But, you know, even when I came back, I was super stressed out because it was like, oh my God, now I've been absent for like a week, but you know, it's just, it's constantly up and down. And I feel that whenever you keep persevering through and breaking through those upper limits, that whatever's waiting on the other side is always going to be so much more worth it for you to even do that small task that continues to move your business forward. The biggest takeaway, if anyone is listening to this or watching this call, mm -hmm. um, for me is the mindset and the perseverance. Because without those two things, it doesn't matter how much you charge or how many clients you have, or, you know, how many followers you have, it, it, it just, you'll never be successful if you can't nail those two aspects down. Because I think that's the biggest, biggest factor you can pay, you know, whatever course or coach or mentor that you have to be your therapist even mm -hmm. and listen to all your problems but if you don't show up yourself and actually be able to practice these techniques and methods and find out the things that you know bring you back to your zen um then i don't think that you'd be successful in this group or any other group for that matter regardless of how, of how much you pay success is very subjective each person's journey like people will stop watching this call thinking oh my goodness you're getting all these clients when after this call you might not get any right it that's part of the journey and it's still a working progress which is why i love that you agreed to continue with this call because the one thing I will share, right, this is a coaching session real here, right here, is that the higher your price, the smaller the pool of people that can afford it, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. recognizing like people like, I want to be booked every weekend and do this and this, this, this. I'm like, I don't want you to be, I want you to make a lot of money. I want you to make mm -hmm. consistent money, right? With yeah. one or two and to wrap your head around that. It's just like, okay, I have nothing but one or two events this month, but I'm making <laughs> more. Yeah, that's hard because you feel, yeah. because- in education, right? They designed you to, if you get an A, you're doing a good job. You get another A, you get, you get instant gratification versus as being an entrepreneur, specifically a CEO, there'll be 
sometimes weeks, sometimes months, right? But then you'll hit your biggest client. I am so excited. Is there any last minute advice you could give someone who might be in your same, who was in your same position and they just need to hear from someone like you? There were a lot of tough lessons that I had to learn. And I think one of the biggest takeaways Aside from, you know, the, the actual proof of, of going, going through it myself that, you know, it takes money to make money. So, you know, when you take that initial investment, it's obviously going to cost you out of your pocket and everything. But in the long term, it's like the value of, of the money doesn't really come from that, but rather what you gained from it in that short amount of time that I've worked with you. And yeah, like when I look back at the calls and stuff, I was literally the newest person in a group. Everyone else is on the call talking about how they just book, you know, thousand dollar clients and they're booked like, you know, week in and week out. And I'm just, you know, selling these little $50 boxes. It was definitely a little bit intimidating, right. but, <laughs> but, you know, even certain challenges to this day that I find that I've um, encountered, like I think just last month I said no to a client that ultimately wasn't a good fit for me, even though it was good money. So it was hard, but at the end of the day, the moral of the story is like money is liquid. It comes and goes, right? Mm-hmm. It's just the longevity of like your success and where you take it because everything that I've gotten back from the program allowed me to do things like that, which is say no to wrong fitting clients, mm-hmm. be okay with going weeks without you know, having bookings, but understanding that even though it's a lower volume that I am making a bigger ticket item sale, um, all the processes that I've gotten out of it, that is the foundation of my business. I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have my, you know, automation, my contracts, my invoices. So now my console calls are just like, boom, boom, boom. Like you just, once you get off the call, you send it and I, like people appreciate like how smooth your business runs because at the end of the day, they're, they're looking to pay top dollar for the experience that they have. So I think all of those things collectively, aside from the, the mindset and all that stuff um, being the foundation, I think that is definitely way more valuable than, you know, the initial investment that, you know, was in the beginning, the toughest decision for me. Now, looking back, it's, it's no contest. Like I would have, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Do it again. (laughs) Well, Jennifer, like your story, I know will inspire someone because uh, I am truly, I know you say I inspire. Everyone says, oh, but you're the reason why I'm like, it's a two-way street because your story represents a little bit of my story of who I used to be. Like, that's how we all connect, right? There's a little bit of something that we all have in common and your story about even being the people pleaser and overcoming perseverance, knowing that whatever's in front of you is not guaranteed. It's just a past thought. And I admire and love, love, love who you've become. I know there are still challenges arising and there will always be challenges, right? That's yeah. what life is. But truly finding the light and being grateful and focusing on the things that are going so good for you is really how you expand those blessings in the future. And like I said, I'm always here for you. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Jennifer, you are a blessing in disguise for someone (laughs) who is probably going to be inspired by your story. Um, If anybody is interested in uh, joining or wanting to hear more, I'll leave some resources down below. And I'll also leave Jennifer's content and Instagram and whatever she has to offer and you share and I'll list it down below as well but thank you so much Jennifer it was such a good time thank you (laughs) thank you always a pleasure